Hello everybody, this is Dave from Let's Make a Game Together and we're going to be continuing this project. Now, I'm not sure if all of you guys have watched the update video, but in the update video I explained a few things that I'll just quickly go over now. Uh, basically, our character, as you can see here, jumps around, does everything fine. Well, kind of fine. <laughs> um, he breaks more than one block at, block at once. He can stick to the stick to the walls like that, which isn't you know, great. And uh, the jumping is, you know, it's fine, but it's nothing to write home about. Well, we are going to adjust and change those things. Um, but like I said in the update, these things take time. And um, for me to do it correctly, I kind of have to do a lot of research because I'm not a super pro at uh, at character controllers. Um, so I want to make sure I do everything right and correct before I pass on that information to you guys. But that's cool. Um, so it's uh, slowly, slowly uh, taking shape, and it is stuff is happening in the background. Uh, just so you know, some of the things that I'll be working on, f hopefully first, uh, are like if you see here, um, uh, I'm not sure if we get a enemy. Let's let's put a box down. Put a box down here, and put a box down here, and then put our enemy here. Press play. The enemy will move back and forth, which is exactly what we want. But if we're just on the edge here, it will. Right then, you see the character wasn't like like. Basically, what, what happens is sometimes the player will jump onto the enemy and it won't kill the enemy. And the reason is, is because the ray that we're firing to check for that is coming right from the center of the player and shooting straight down. So if your character, if your enemy is like right here or right here, it'll still collide, but the ray won't touch and then therefore it won't um, do the animation. So that's one of the first things I want to... Uh, address. Uh, same with the enemy. I also want to clean up all the ray casting because the ray casting I think is in a few different scripts if my memory is correct and I want to neaten all that up and obviously we want to add animation things, things like that and start neatening up the project. But in the meantime I had a couple of um, my awesome Patreon supporters uh, suggest that I do a save system so I thought hey let's do that. That's the next thing we're going to do um, and yeah and so yeah, let's jump into it, I suppose. Um, obviously, to, uh, to start off, thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks for the suggestions. Also, guys, if you're not a Patreon supporter and you can afford to be, um, go check out the Patreon um, account and just check it out. It really does support me. It really does helps encourage me uh, to keep creating these videos. Um, and yeah, thanks heaps. Uh, also, all the scripts that I, most of the scripts that I, um, that I write out in, in this get posted to the Patreon so if you're having str struggles and just want the scripts and you can f uh, spare a few bucks jump over to the Patreon and you get all the scripts just there <laughs> okay uh, so let's uh, let's neaten up this project a little bit we don't need um, we don't need all these boxes don't need the enemy or this box um, okay, so there's a couple of ways we can handle a save system. Now, uh, obviously, if you're making this for, I remember when I first started make coding, I was like, I, you know, I thought save systems were pretty easy, and they are, but then you think, oh, no, what about, you know, when someone maybe updates their game, what happens to that save data? Like, how do you get that to persist between two different saves? Uh, and especially if like someone's like, you know, if you're building an iPhone game or an Android game, which by the way, this will work on an iPhone or an Android um, on the stores. You've just got to input touch controls, which are pretty easy. Um, and yeah, what, what happens between updates of that um, game? And does do the, and you know, people don't want to lose their save data and stuff. So yeah, so that's one of the things that you have to consider, and it's actually turns out it's pretty easy because of Unity. So there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, the, basically, the quickest and simplest way is to use player press. Now, um, if I just do something, if I type in player press, 
you know, you can see here, it has all the information um, that you kind of need to use them. So if you do want to look into them, um, you know, it's it's pretty easy to do it this way. So save, uh, but all you do is you set set integers and you um, get integers. Now, player prefs is kind of limited, but it does the job. But we're not going to use, be using player prefs. But for argument's sake, if you did want to use player prefs, you could. All you need to do is, if you want to load some data, you can, um, you know, playerprefs.getint player.score. That's if you want to load some data, and if you want to save some data, you do set int. It's really simple. So, say if I had a score called, like I had, let me just show you. Um, let's go to scripts, create a new script called data management. Open that up. Okay, so say if say oh, oh what's going on there? Get rid of those, we don't need those guys. Say if we wanted to use player prefs, it's it's pretty simple. Um it's basically like you just you just literally call prefs dot set int and it's asking for a key. So you say like I score and then you say 10 or whatever the high score is and then that, that's it, it's saved and that will actually persist between um, different saves, as as it, between updates and everything. And if you want to say, you can say player prefs dot get int and as long as it's ex is exactly the same, it's fine. That's how you just you just get int. You get the the score. But there's a little bit more involved in that. But I won't go into it now. What we are going to do is we're going to create a more robust uh, saving system. And if any of you guys have followed my tutorials in the past, um, then you'll know what I'm talking about. It's basically the same save system that I use for most of my games. It's for both the games, a Galaxy Cube and Super Keegan that are on the App Store and the Android Store. This save system is being used. Um, and yeah, so we're going to do that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do um, is whenever you have... Uh, you want to be able to save your game from wherever you are. So like, wh where do we want to save our game? So we don't want our game to be saving all the time, obviously. We don't want our game to be loading all the time, obviously. We want to load at the start of the game and we want to save at the end of the game um, or, the, or whenever the player clicks save. So it's good to have a save method and a load method. So uh, let's make this easier and let's just make it so it loads the sc your um, it loads the score when you start the level, when, when you start the game, but in this case the level, and it saves the score when you finish the level. So, uh, our end level here, it's all great and invisible, but let's make that, uh, let's give it a sprite renderer. Let's chuck on, it's just white. Let's drag that out, and we can set its transparency a little bit, make it green. And then, yeah, that, that's going to work fine, so if we press play. <laughs> When our player goes, hits the end area, which is marked in green, the score gets added up together. Cool. Now that's also the area we want to save the data. So what we want to do is we want to create a save method and a load method in here that gets the data. 
But first, because we also want to encrypt the data, so no one can just like fudge with the numbers and adjust things how they like, um, you know, we want it to be encrypted. And, and, and a good way to do that is to just use binary formatting. So, so we need to add a couple of namespaces uh, to get that going just fine. So we need using Unity Engine, which we've got. We, we need using system.collection. We need systems. We don't need system.collection to generic, but we'll leave it in there. We want to add using system. We want to add using system.io. And we want to add using system dot runtime dot serialization dot formatters dot binary okay that's a big one now what uh, namespaces do is they give you more functionality inside your code so you know y if you had it all of them all turned on the code would be a mess um, you know because you know, you'd have a million different options sometimes you don't want all those options so um, they just put the main ones inside the Unity engine and system collection, and we just added some different namespaces so we can use different functionality. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to write public static data management, which is this script, and we want to call it data data management with a little d and m. Okay, then we want to add a high score. So public int. So, oops. Public int high score. And then we want to create our, um, our awake method. So what we're going to do is it's, it's called, this is called the single design, single ten sorry I can't speak design pattern, which basically means that this object stays within the scene and it moves from scene to scene, from level to level, um, and if another one pops up, it deletes it. You know, it just it's this is the only thing in the scene, and it's the only one that stays in the scene. Uh, and and then every time we want to save data, it gets saved to this game object, and every time we want to load data, data, this game object is the game object that handles that, if that makes sense. So if you have a menu, uh, this game object will be instantiated into that menu. And then when you move into your first level, it stays around, it doesn't go anywhere. So to do that, we uh, we basically create this little, uh, little method inside awake. I suppose you could do it inside a start, but start uh, happens after awake, and I just like to do things in awake. So let's just do void awake. And we just say if data management, little data management equals null. Don't destroy on load. So it's saying that uh, if this equals null, we don't destroy this game object. Pretty simple, right? Not rocket science just yet. And then we also want to assign data management to equal this. Cool. Then we want to write else if else if Data management does not equal this. We want to destroy this game object. Okay, so just running through this, um, if data management, if there is no object called data management, then don't destroy this game object because this is going to now be the game object called data management. And this is the game object called data management. And then, um, but if data management does not equal this, then destroy that game object. So if it moves into a scene, if this game object moves into a scene and there's already another 
game object there called data management. It's going to destroy that game object and use this one instead, which is exactly what we want. Okay, and then we want to create two methods. Uh, we want to create a void. Actually, I think we need public, yeah. We use public void save data. And we want to create a public public void load data. Okay, so data is loaded. Data is saved. So the idea being is that when we're playing the game, um, we'll be able to call these methods from anywhere in the game and it will load all the, it will save all the data and it will load all the data. So for example, let's move over to, back over to Unity. We've got this game object here um, and we've got our player. We've got our player score script. I think that's the one that deals with it. It adds up everything. Yep, so at the end of the level here, we can then call the save method. So we could say data management dot data management dot save data. And that's it, we've saved the data. Now obviously the save method doesn't do anything yet. <laughs> we'll work on that. But the reason we can do that is because we've made, it, we've made this class a static class, which means that it can be accessed throughout the entire project. Now, um, static is something that you shouldn't use uh, just um, all the time. It's something that um, you should use only if you kind of know what you're doing. You see, because you can you can make any variable um, static. So I could make you know public static int player score, and then I can access this variable by just typing in player underscore score dot player score, and I can access and, and adjust that variable from anywhere else in the entire program in the entire game and that might seem awesome but you run into problems where uh, when the character dies and the level reloads the score doesn't reload or the score stays the same or you know uh, there's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't use static but it's a really handy um, thing to use if you know what you're doing okay so let's jump into uh, saving data and loading data okay so this is where it kind of gets a little bit complicated um, I won't go into detail explaining every single little thing that I'm doing, but I will, uh, if you follow exactly what I'm doing here, everything will be hunky-dory and work absolutely fine. So we want to actually create a, another class outside of this data management class. So to do that, we say class game data. And so when we actually save data, we, we're actually saving this class. That's So whatever's in this class is what we're actually going to be saving. And every time we load data, it's going to be loading stuff from this class. And we want to make sure this uh, class is also serializable. So to do that, we write serializable on top of it, just like that. That's fine. And then inside here, we put our variable. So we say um, public int and up here it's called high score so we're going to call it the same thing okay so then inside of save data we'll deal with this first um, we uh, get rid of that we are going to say we're going to create a new binary formatter binary formatter they're called bin form and we equal to new binary formatter. And then we're going to create a new file stream called file and we're going to file. We're going to create application dot persistent I don't know why it's not why it's 
stuffing up like that on the so I'm just going to back up a little bit right, everything's good there sorry guys file stream and we'll call that file and we need to let's see, file don't create application dot persistent data path so persistent data path is the data path that stays around when you update your application and so it's going to be a persistent data path and we're going to create a new file by just adding plus slash remember the slash I've stuffed up before in one of my projects I've got the slash and it's stuffed everything up dot dat Cool, so this creates file. This creates a binary formatter. Cool, beautiful spelling, I don't care. All right, next thing. The next thing that we're going to do is create a new container for the data. So we'll say game data data, not date, data, uh, equals new game data. I know how this is not confusing at all. Creates container for data. Then we can say data, this is where the magic happens, dot high score equals my score. So that's a little bit confusing. I'm going to make this one all lowercase. So up here, it's uppercase with the S. Down here, it's lowercase. So what it's saying is data, which is this um, class here, the game data data, it's this class here, and then it's saying data dot high score. So this high score equals this high score. Right? I know it's a bit confusing. Um, and yeah, so then that is saving the data. It's it's getting the high score from here, which is what we're going to be updating, and then putting it into our um, our class's high score here. All we need to do now is say bin form, which is our binary formula here. Dot serialize. We want to serialize file and. Data. And of course, at the end, so this serializes. Great spelling once again. We all we need to do is close the file. Cool. So it just closes the file. So all this does is creates a binary formatter, creates a file at this um, location. Then it uh, access, accesses the data, change, get, gets the, the information from this variable here. And also you can add more when we have like coins or whatever, you'll say like data dot coins equals coins or whatever. So like that's where we add a lot of information. And bin form dot serializes. So it serializes a lot of stuff into a binary file and then it closes this file that we've opened up, which is just basically like a text file. But in binary. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So, so we've saved some data in some a pretty badass way, and uh, now all we need to do is uh, basically load the data, which is very similar to saving the data, except we wrap everything in an if statement that says if file dot exists, and what file would that be? Well, you guessed it. Application dot system data path. So if this file exists, then load, but if it doesn't, don't worry about loading, obviously. But if it does, hey, load the data from game, game info.data. So that, obviously, you don't want it to load 
um, load the data if there's no data to, be, to be loaded, like maybe when the first player first starts the game. Um, so this just ensures that. Cool, and then all we need to do is we need to create a binary formatter called bin, bin form, oh, bin form, and equal, equal that to a new binary formatter. And then file stream, file, equals file dot open instead of dot create and what do we want to open application dot persist just copy this <laughs> it's good because it also makes sure it's the same we want to open application persist persistent data path we want to open up this file. Great. What's the next thing it's asking for? Um, it's asking for a file mode, so we can just say file mode dot open. And obviously, you can see here you can append. So if later on you add more variables into your game, you can append them there. Um, but we'll go into that at a later time. And then game data. data equals game data. So we want to cast this as game data. Bin form dot deserialize. Cool. And then we want to say file dot close. So this decrypts it, decrypts the binary. Obviously you want all in binary so no one cheats. And then all we need to write is high score equals data dot high score. Cool. Okay, so um, that is it I'm pretty sure. Pretty simple, right? So if we save data and we load data, great. So um, if we move over to, so we want our, we've got our int high score here. Now we want the high score to be added up before the 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 data is saved. So over in our player score area here, um, and it's got the count score method. Count score player equals player score plus blah blah blah. So we can actually say um, Straight after this, we can say um, we can say data management dot data management dot high score equals. This is just for testing purposes, obviously. And then we can also grab this save um, line of code that we added just over here, and we can add that there. Don't need this to debug anymore. Okay, cool. So hopefully uh, that works. But what we're going to do just to check it is we're going to say debug dot log, and we're going to say um, debug dot log dot so check this working first. Data management dot data management dot high score. We're gonna call that once. So at the start it's going to call so we can say data manage data says high score is currently And then we can say here, now that we have saved, or now that we have 
added the score to data. Management. Data says high score. Man, I probably that we're more complicated than needs to be, but let's just test it out. Okay, we have an error. Let's check out what this error is. Oh, we need to add that. And we probably need to add it into the game. So create a new empty. We're just going to call this data management. I said data. We want to zero it out for the sake of ACD and add data management. Cool. All right, everything's working fine. That's great news. Great. So you can even see here that the highest score is 2,314. You can see down here the score was zero and then went to 2,314. So to explain that a little bit, um, play a score. To explain that, we're obviously asking what it is before we've even added it to that that variable, and then we're asking what it is after we've added it to that variable, and we're saving the data. So now that the data has been saved, when we go back, because we saved the data there, when we go back and we press play. Um, Let's see what happens. Nothing happens because the data hasn't been loaded yet, but let's move over to here. Let's create a void start. This is just for testing. And we can say data management dot data management dot load data. Now it should load the data. Bam! Our high score is now 2,314. Isn't that awesome? So we're loading. We're, so to clarify what we're doing, we're creating a serialized, um, encrypted um, save file. We're loading and then we're getting our score and we're sending it to that save file and it's writing this which is just right now just my score, we're writing that out to an, an actual file that will stay there between app updates, between game updates, between, you know, you name it. It's at the persistent data path. It will stay there unless you delete the entire game off your, your system, off your iPhone or your Android phone. And then when we need that data, we're loading that data. So that that's pretty awesome. We've created a pretty, pretty good functioning um, data management script that saves and loads data awesomely, and it's 49 lines of code. Fantastic, that's awesome. Well guys, um, I think we're going to leave the tutorial there. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know. Obviously, Patreon supporters get uh, first priority support, and um, hello to all the new people. Thanks for subscribing to this channel. Um, love you guys heaps, and I'll see you guys next time.